Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we've got the usual suspects. Of course, the big papa is in uh, Kona, Hawaii right now, taking a, I don't know, if I, can I even say a much-needed vacation? Let's just say a vacation, because the guy's life is like vacation. But we got the nightcap meister, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We got Bearland Aaron. Bearland Aaron Williams, how are you? I'm doing good. I, I never get tired of that, that growl. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Excellent. Good to be here. Glad to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? Doing great. Thanks. Great. And, a, and then we got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, always great to see you on the round table. You as well, Mark. When he's not saving lives, he shows up on Tuesdays and comes on the round table podcast. And it's much appreciated. And of course, the brain. I'm not even going to say the professor. Just the brain. The land geek flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So, Scott, we were talking before the, the, uh, the podcast um, a little bit about the idea of consistency. So, full disclosure, Scott has a Peloton. Um, Scott, the nightcap meister, Bossman has a Peloton. I have a Peloton. Now we each write it a little bit differently. Um, Scott, Todd, t- talk about your, your, your biking sort of methodology. Right. So what, what I do is I incorporate it into my daily routine whenever possible. So I want to show up every single day, six days a week. I get myself one day a week where I don't don't ride, take a day off, but six days a week, I'm showing up even if it's for, you know, cause you can do different class sizes. Like me, I prefer the 20 minute rides, even though sometimes I'll do it 30. Sometimes I'll do it 45. Most of the days, 90% of my days, 95% of my time is a 20 minute ride. But I think it's so important to show up every single day. Now I've noticed from stalking like you and Scott Bossman, you guys don't do it the same way, right? You know, there's, there's other inconsistent habits there, which I'm not judging. I'm just saying this does lead us into even our own businesses, how we show up there. So just kind of curious, should you show up every single day, whether it's for your Peloton rides, Mark, or for your mailing or for your marketing, or is it okay to just do it like a few times a week, even if you add more time to it? Or should you balk mail or do your balk ads? Consistency or batching the work? What do you think? Um, Well, let's start with the nightcap meister, Scott Bossman. Do you believe in consistency, doing a little something every single day in the business? Or do you believe you can batch it and, you know, do it that way? Well, consistency is what got me where I am today with a side hustle, starting with land investing, you need to do something every single day to move the needle. Now, <clears throat> I also believe though, that you can, you can do thing, you can do batch work and be consistent. You can have time, Scott Todd, where you get on that bike and you, you pedal for 30 minutes at the highest intensity you've ever pedaled. And then maybe the next day, take a day off, step off the bike, do some yoga, do a little bit different activity, but in the same realm, and then the next day get on the bike again. So I, there's an analogy in my business, I guess I try to mail on Mondays. So I'll send out a big batch on Mondays. Uh, but the rest of the week, I'm following up with some of these other things, trying to remain, trying to remain consistent with my land business health, I guess. Right. So the general, the general philosophy then is that you're doing some type of business consistently every right. single day. It just may not be the same activity. You may batch different activities on different days. Right, exactly. All right, I, I like that. Um, Bearland Aaron, how about you? 
Oh, you're on mute. I'm a believer in the consistency. Um, it's something I often struggle with, um, but I, I have seen, you know, the consistency brings the results you're looking for um, a lot more predictably and more often than sporadic, maybe batching. Um, I've got a little case study that I, I can pull from that uh, kind of illustrates that. And there's this uh, store right down the street from me. And, uh, you know, they've got a lot of signage and stuff. And when you drive by, you notice them. But I didn't think about them from day to day um, unless I drove by that way. And every now and then I'd see them on Facebook posting an event or something like that. But in between those times, it did, I didn't think about it. Um, they've recently in the last month started a Facebook campaign where they're showing up on the Facebook feeds every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, but it's been consistent every day throughout the month. And um, I don't think there's been a day this month I haven't thought about them. Uh, even if I didn't see them that day because I wasn't on Facebook or something like that, uh, you know, it still resonated in my mind. So that I think that illustrates how the consistency um, translates to, you know, the side you don't see, maybe your customer side and that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. The terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt, how about you? I don't really feel like my business started going until I had that consistency. It helped me create habit patterns and, and continually doing these things created momentum. For instance, on Friday, if I don't have my Lincoln for Land Moto deal of the week by 10 in the morning, I won't get it done. I, I have to have it specific to the time. It has to be done between eight and 10 because I'll just push it and put, oh, I'll get it done, I'll get it done. And then it's like too late. Um, and then I have to look at my leads every day because if I don't, the ones that are hot will start to go cold. I can't just walk away for a day, right? I got to religiously look at those leads and, and work them through my sales funnel. Um, I didn't notice batching does help me find weak points in my process. If I want to see how much my acquisitions manager can handle, right, I'll send out a big mailing. Okay. Let's see where the breakdowns start, right? And, and maybe I can help fortify her before I scale into a larger size business. But I do notice that I, I do need to start taking like a Sabbath day. Not, I'm not super religious, but I, I'm, I have to find a day where I can cut it off. And that's been a challenge for me where I'm not doing it all the time or wanting to be attached to the phone because I'm having these conversations with people. So that's becoming a challenge for me on the, on the flip side. No, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Uh, the technician, Eric Peterson, how about you? Yeah. So I think, uh, much like Scott Bossman, I would say that, um, consistent consistency really got me to where I am today. Um, you know, I've, I've talked before about when I got started and I would spend, you know, nights after, you know, I put the kids to bed and, um, all that kind of stuff. And I would do that, you know, every night consistently. And that's what helped me grow my business. And even to this day, I mean, I'm still consistent with all the elements of the business. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think it's extremely important in the, the advertising and marketing area um, to set up a system, build a team that is producing and getting ad content out there in front of the world um, on a daily basis, okay? That doesn't mean that, that you yourself have to be doing that, but it needs to happen on a daily basis. And there's other elements of this business that that have to be addressed on a daily basis i think you know as mimi said following up with leads things of that nature it's also very important um, again ultimately it doesn't have to be you but early on it is going to be you and there is um, some level of importance to responding to those leads in a timely manner and not letting them sit for too long because they're going to find another ad and uh, buy a different property. So um, 
on the mailing side of things, um, you know, it's, I have, I guess less of an issue there um, being completely consistent where you're sending out mail every day. However, if you do that, if you build a system to send out mail every day, your flow of deals is going to be much more consistent and easier to deal with for yourself or your acquisition manager. Um, so it's something to consider, but you know, if you want to send out a thousand offers at the beginning of the month or 500 or, or whatever, um, it's fine. Uh, however, you are going to get large groups of response all at once. Yeah. Right. I mean, we'll, you know, we'll bring on a new coaching client and they immediately want to send out, you know, 10,000 offers in the first month. And we're like, no, no. Cause they want all that deal for it. Like, no, no, you're, you don't have the systems even set up yet to even handle that kind of volume. So, um, so I, yeah, I absolutely get that. Uh, Zen master. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I think this consistency issue does boil down to some of the, uh, well, one thing everybody keeps bringing up is habits. I think the fact that uh, you create daily habits. So I, I guess I'm more in line with, you know, it reminds me, I saw this podcast, uh, no, a TEDx talk. This guy, you ever hear Tim Harford? I think that's who it is. And he talks about um, 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 slow, mo slow motion or something, multitasking. Basically, he talks about, you know, a lot of people say you shouldn't, you know, uh, multitask. But I think that when you're in the mindset, like of doing, you know, of, following patterns and habits and, and consistent, it's going to transfer to all areas of your life. So basically in this podcast, he was talking uh, Ted talk. He was talking about how someone like Darwin who would be focusing on something like really uh, deep, but then he would go study something else. Uh, like, I don't know, like uh, the anatomy of the worm or something. I forget what it was. And that would, that would, that would kind of bring more creativity back to it. So he was always going from one thing to another with that consistency. So I think, whether it's the Peloton or whether it's the land investing, I think if, if your daily life includes like diving deep into things and staying consistent and really exploring, then I think you're going to grow uh, much uh, quicker. And I think that with our business model, um, that mindset comes out in, again, like habits. I think systems is another word for consistency. We talk about um, automation and delegation and all that, but the systems is really where we're going to ensure our, um, our daily um, habits and therefore our consistency. So I think the highest use of all of us, right? Uh, we always talk about this is building our system because then it's plug and play. We don't have to worry about, um, you know, well, do I have to do this today or that today? It's, it's being done and you're just tweaking that system. So yeah, I believe in consistency, absolutely. I think that you have to have these daily habits, you know, build systems. And also I think it's like, and the reason I brought up that, slow motion, multitasking, this guy, I think it's Tim Hartford is his name. It was a pretty, really cool, small, quick Ted talk. It's just because, you know, we talk about building this model of land investing, but then what? So it's all built. And then what do we do? We all, none of us just sit back and don't do anything. We all find other ways to kind of uh, implement deeper, right? Into the land investing can go in so many different directions. So if we have this creative disciplined mindset, then we're always going to be progressing. So, yeah, I mean, boy, I just jumped all over the place, but I think absolutely daily habits, consistency, systems, it's all the same, right? We want to be in that mindset. So, you know, Scott's getting up every day doing the Peloton. You know, I believe in that too. I'll go to the Y almost every day. Just do a 20 minute workout and then jump in the shower, feel great, come back. It sets the day in motion and keep rolling with those habits throughout the day and that consistency. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know for me, like I don't feel right unless I do certain things every single day. And it's, you know, like, I'll admit, I might be a little OCD about it. You know, I'll use the app streak. So, like, every day, I'll meditate. Like, every day. Um, every day, I'll do some type of workout. Every day, I'll journal. Um, and then that kind of leaks into other parts of my business where every day, I'll do some marketing. Um, every day, we'll do some deal flow. Now, that doesn't mean we might not batch it on one day, but we'll definitely get it done. Um, I'll batch, say, my emails for the week uh, on a Sunday. I'll spend an hour in the morning um, and just write the emails for the week. So, you know, I'm consistently doing sort of the same things on the same days at the same time. So some things are, are small, 
and I'm consistently doing them every day. And some things are a little bit bigger and I'll batch them. So I try to check email only twice a day so that my, I'm not getting hijacked by the dopamine hit of ch constantly checking email, which for me isn't very productive, um, even though I might get a little dopamine hit. So I, I think that, you know, like what Scott Boston was saying, like a hybrid model of it will work. But I think going back to Scott Todd's original point, you have to consistently do something every single day and find out what works for you. Eric Peterson brought a really good point. To build his business, he had to consistently mail and market. Um, and then, you know, Mike consistently built the systems. Mimi consistently built the, the, the systems. And, and Mimi even said, like, it wasn't until she got consistent that it really started to move the needle. So I think that ultimately, Scott Todd, what's the moral of the story? Well, I think that uh, I think that Scott Bossman, really everybody, but Scott Bossman said it. Eric said it too. You got to be consistent. It's the only way to grow your business, right? You got to. It doesn't matter if you're batching the the work uh, and doing 250 mailings on Monday, or you know, writing all your ads and letting them drip out. That's okay. The most important thing is that every single day you're showing up and you're committed to building your business. Because ultimately, that's what you're building. You're building a business. You're not, you're not buying a property. You're, bu you're trying to build a land buying and selling machine. And if, you, if you're focused on that piece and you show up every single day, in the beginning, it's going to be a lot more work. But then as you start to pare down off of it and you start to build your teams, well, then the work will begin to change and, and you'll be able to continue to grow. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't read it yet or listened to it yet, but I did download... James Clear Atomic Habits on Audible. Has anybody read that? Um, it's supposed to be great. Uh, I think Charles Duhigg also has a really good book on habits. So, but are, are habits really the same thing as consistently building your business? I guess it could be. I mean, Mike Zana, what do you think? Well, if they're the right habits, yeah, you know, the right habits, yeah. But I think uh, it's funny, kind of, but uh, kind of jokingly, but truthfully, like, okay, like here's a good quote. Remember Darth Vader? I know that Scott Boston like this. Doesn't he say, "I find your lack of faith disturbing"? Right. Well, the reason why people wouldn't stay consistent and build, you know, build these have have habits and stay consistent with the land business is they maybe they don't truly believe in it. You got to believe in this. This is a real model. It works. Have the faith that you know we're not we're not here just. You know, talking about things that we're not doing, we're all doing it, right? We're all successfully doing it. This is a real model that really works. So you got to have that type of faith to stay consistent, I think. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. And um, it's cool. so funny. I was, I was talking to uh, one of my mentors and he was saying, Mark, you know, um, investors only fail for like six reasons. And we started listing the reasons and um, they all kind of made sense. And and uh, it was just kind of interesting, but it only boiled down to six ways you could really screw up making sort of an investment. And I, I think for our business, there's only maybe two ways you can screw up your land business. And one is not, is not being consistent, right? And the other one is just, I guess, is it just quitting, right? It, I, I don't know. I, I don't know of any other way you can sort of just um, not be successful in this business. Like Mimi, I love telling the story about you at bootcamp. Like your, one of your batches of offers had zero on it. What happened? Oh, you're on mute. Still got offers or still got accepted offers. You still got accepted offers. So, I mean, even when you kind of technically don't do it right, she got, she sent the mail out. Right. So essentially she did something and still got a positive result from it. So I like to really think about this. Like what are the, the, the ways that you can really screw up the land business? You know, don't pay attention to your expenses, not paying attention to your expenses. So, uh, so being not negotiate, always ending up on the poor end of a negotiation. Overpaying 
overpaying, under yeah. underselling. Yeah, but I mean, how is it possible if if you work our model, right? right. So you look at the comps, you divide by four. How are you going to overpay? I guess if you don't check the back taxes, there's got to be something in there. But even then, you would learn from that mistake, and you would be better the next time. So you're not going to. You might fail on one transaction, but that won't kick you out of the business, right? It's not like there's very few things you can do in this business that are not, you know, solvable, right? So for example, if I'm doing a multifamily deal and I screw that up, I may never recover from that. I'll go BK, I'll lose investor money, right? My reputation's down. I may never recover from that one deal. In our business, that's not how it works, right? So it's interesting. Maybe we'll do another round table on just, on that. I don't know. What do you think, Eric Peterson? Yeah, I think it's, it's on the agenda. Actually, we, we talked, uh, was it last week about having a discussion about some mistakes we've made along the way? I think that's kind of ties into what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Scott Bossman. I would just say, uh, a, a common theme lately I'm hearing, uh, in the group is I think people are fearful. Uh, so I think fear is a huge barrier in, uh, maybe this is a new venture. Maybe they're not a business person. Maybe they've never done anything in real estate. Maybe they're, they come from a, a family where, you know, everyone is educated and they go to a four year college and they end up with a job eight to five. Uh, and that's just, you know, it's probably another conversation for another time, but <clears throat> people are fearful, I think, to purchase their first property, uh, even, even though the numbers, uh, add up. Um, so there needs to be some faith, uh, in, you know, in what you're learning and, and like, you know, like everybody said, you gotta, you gotta take a leap of faith and, and not have that lack of faith. And I don't think, I think it's in this community, it's easy to have faith because you see the proof. I mean, you see it every day, uh, in with, with the posts from the, from uh, people who are having success. No, it's, there's, there's like an overwhelming amount of proof to the point where like, I'm getting to the point where like com comparison is the thief of happiness. And I'm like, wait a second. I didn't get those kind of numbers this week. How is, you know, Roberto Chavez doing it? He's just in coaching. So um, it's insane. Yeah, absolutely. Which kind of leads us to a nice segue of Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. If you want to learn how to go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently, then you've got to learn about Flight School. Have Scott Todd be your Sherpa up that mountain. Learn more. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with the Zen Master or the Nightcap Meister, and um, they'll find they'll, they'll You guys will figure it out together as well. Um, and then Eric Peterson want to remind everybody about the toolkit. Eric. Yeah, I'll just, I'll add a little comment about that. So I think, um, you know, for some people, the investors toolkit is, is the right place to start. And, um, it's where I started. There was, there was no flight school at that time, but, um, it's a good introduction and kind of, overall picture of the business. It gives you the, the tools that are needed to get started. Um, what's missing there is, is the accountability piece and, and someone like Scott Todd, you know, looking over your shoulder and, and pushing you to get your mailings out. But, um, but it's also a great way to get started. No, absolutely. It's a great, it's a great start. Um, the only problem with these do-it-yourself sort of programs is that you have to have so much self-discipline and so much confidence that you can do it on your own. And, um, you know, the numbers are there. It's like a 3% success rate. So congratulations, Eric Peterson, for just taking the toolkit and being able to succeed. That being said, you did go into one-on-one -on -one coaching. Absolutely. Right. So it's a tough thing to do. And, um, I, you know, I don't want to bash the investor's toolkit. I think it's a great, um, you know, base of fundamental knowledge. When everybody comes to boot camp, everyone's singing from the same song sheet. But if you're really serious about 
getting to the next level, then you need the, you, you really need the accountability of flight school. And you, because having that and being able to just have a, a, a question to somebody who's done, I don't know, Sky, over a thousand deals now, over a thousand deals, just to know you're doing it the right way. Like that's priceless, right? So, you know, I think if you're going to do something, do it the right way. But, um, and even Barryland Aaron mentioned that we did update the toolkit. It's even better, but we're constantly always updating. So, you know, it's, it's better than nothing. I would say that. Right, Zen Master? Absolutely. Uh, I think all good. I mean, the, it just depends on the individual, right? Obviously, the quickest route to success is the, uh, is the uh, flight school. I always tell people, you know, maybe you don't necessarily uh, need the flight school, but you want it. I mean, we have people that come to us that are already doing three or four deals in a month, and they go through flight school, and they're blown away. Because really what Scott's showing them is the, the how to build the system, right? How to build it. And I always tell people, right? One thing I didn't really like in college was when you would read a, you know, you read something, you go to the, uh, to the, to the auditorium and the professor would put up and then they'd read it to you, right? They put, it's like, you just studied this and now the whole presentation is them reading it to you. So we, I, I always tell people the uh, flight school is not Scott Todd reading you the toolkit. It's not that he's not going to sit there and pull out. Okay. Today we're going to go over this. You know, it's really how to build the business front to back, right? How to implement that into a truly functioning and we're, you know, you're mirroring somebody who's really successful, which we all know, everybody knows, right? You want to be successful. Uh, when you say Scott leaves clues, so you fall, you, you don't just give them the clues, you give them the whole recipe. So I guess it's better than clues, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Mark, it's and, funny because in flight school, the one thing I tell them is, look, the toolkit's good, but it's it's really designed to be like the self-starter version. Now we're going to kick it up a notch and go into kind of ninja mode. So it's one level up from the ninja. It's, it's the first level in ninja mode, which is here. We're going to help you take the investor's toolkit, which is a very, very intensive piece of information. And we're going to pull out the most important components of it. And we're going to execute on these things so that we get the, the, the ball rolling. I mean, you could go through the investor's toolkit for months and, and, and not take action. But in flight school, we take action because we're shortcutting. We're pulling out the, the gems that we need. It's already done for you. Yeah, absolutely. So to learn more, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a call, which now leads us to our tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable, maybe even a quote that the Art of Passive Income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. I thought today's roundtable discussion was lively, but now we get to pick on the Zen master, Mike Zeno, for his tip of the week. Well, Mike, I do have a quote. Uh, because I know how much Scott Todd loves them. And, but this relates actually to, to, to flight school and what we're talking about. And um, it's this idea of, you know, if you're persistent, you will get it. If you're consistent, you will keep it, right? So the whole idea is, yeah, you can do one deal. I always tell everybody, yeah, we, you know, you can one, do one deal, but that doesn't, you know, typically move the needle for anybody, right? You just, you know, do a deal here, do a deal there. But again, so the quote, if you're persistent, you will get it. If you're consistent, you'll keep it. So the whole idea of flight school is that consistency, right? Scott Boss and I talk about it creates the, you know, we had actually it wasn't, we didn't say this. One of our, one of the attendees said it creates accountability, a uh, habit with accountability brings a habit, which brings discipline and brings results. Right. So that's what like Scott Todd always says, you're moving your feet. You know, he, I say the toolkit is like the Wikipedia. It's like, it's all the facts, the factual data on land investing. Right. Great. But now implement it right now. Get your feet moving and do deals. Well, that's what flight school comes in. Right. You're, you're investing, you're consistent. Right. But um, of course, the persistency is good, right? You want to, you know, stay diligent and get it done, but then keep doing it. And don't just keep doing it at the same level. Keep scaling it. That's why we talk about our micro niche, right? Which is automation and delegation. We're not just land investors. We're system builders, which is even more powerful. And I think that's awesome. All right. I love it. I love it. Um, all right. Well, I, I thought today's podcast was awesome. I want to thank the listeners I want to remind everybody the only way that we're going to be able to cajole Scott Bossman and Barryland Aaron to keep showing up for the round tables. If you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course. All right. Are we ready? 
One, two, two three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. So ring. So much better in person. I wasn't even part of that one, and it I was, was muted. Like crazy off. You guys are great. <laughs> Can we go back know. to this Peloton thing for a minute? Because Scott Todd, I want you to look at your total miles and look at my total miles. And I want you to count your number of workouts and count my number of workouts. I am on your tail, man. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Still being recorded. Wow. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we're we're talking about miles here. So like we can pick pick whatever metric we want to pick. <laughs> but like let let's just go through the let's pick a, a metric number here, shall we? And I'm not saying you're not doing a good job. However, let's let's go to this. Let's see. Intensity. Here. Let's talk intensity. I, I will say okay, though, well, in, in what is your time. what is your average resistance on your last ride? Oh, oh my! God. It was it was high. I, I don't know. I got to look at it. I rolled last night. I can't. Okay. Well, can't let, it up. Let, here, here. Let you let's probably just, have it. Oh, let's look at it. Here, we'll share the screen and let's look. <laughs> Since we're talking about intensity. this, kind of reminds me of an old uh, uh, <laughs> enterprise value total deals kind of contest that happened a right? couple of years ago. Cycling workouts. Yeah, yeah. 20. We got 20, Scott. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. Uh, five minute post ride stretch. Well, that's one of your 20. Okay, so let's go to Jess King's 20, 30 minute ride here. Look at the three medals I got. Three okay. medals. All right. So wow. you got you got three medals, one of which is a personal best medal. That's great. Ten miles, great. Four hundred and sixty-seven <laughs> miles. Average resistance, fifty-nine. That's good. That's right. really good. Oh, 49. forty-nine. That's really oh, good. Sorry, forty-nine. Apologize. Forty-nine. Total output. Wait, wait, Scott, look at the average cadence though at 49, 81. He's working hard. 49 and 80. Right. Okay. That's a good workout right there. All right. <laughs> No problem. Let's I see. silenced him. I'll put, hold on a minute. I'll put best wattage, 296. All right, so let's just take a few of these numbers here. And let's go back to see. Oh, you got him started. Oh, no. You got him started. Hold on, let's see here. By, by the way, um, Scott Bossman, is it, you know, um, total output envy is a thing now. <laughs> okay, so Scott, I... See, I ride 20-minute rides, not 30-minute rides. So your mileage will be more than mine. That's by its nature, okay? My average resistance is 52%. Not bad. My average cadence, what was his, Mark? 81. 80, in the 80. 81. So I'm at 73. Yeah. So he beat me there. Output's going to be higher. But my best wattage, 462, baby. What would that power? What's, what so that you mean? you must have pumped that that average resistance into the seventies to get that output. I I did, yeah. But look at the consistency. Ready? Let's look at this. Look, look. Monday. Get on the bike after this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday. Oh wait, we don't even have to do it that way. Let's go over here to the calendar oh look at all these medals hold on man. look at all these medals man <laughs> wow wow i got them all you got them all i don't have them all, all but not all of them but here let's go down to the good ones 10 weeks consistent the uh, uh 10 daily streaks weekly streaks social streaks all your medals scott todd I, I i'm sure you're, baby. A little bit you're doing you're doing good scott you're doing good you're doing good i'm really proud of you but <laughs> let i will take full credit for this one thing i have a vox from last week where i called you and mark out and i said step it up babies let's go That's well i did, did have i did have an excuse though i wasn't consistent my, <sighs> my pedal broke and they got it got His fixed and since then broke. i've been doing it see what he should have done was he should personal accountability would have had mark going down to the peloton store that day saying my pedals broke i need a replacement he could have picked that bike up and carried it in <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> I swear. I they should, they should, they should, so 
Good job. Like, I'm proud of you're me. riding the bike, like a TV show comes on, you really love, but if you get below a pedaling speed, it starts to go off. So you have to keep pedaling to keep the show on. That would probably motivate you, right? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I did think of that, by the way, with a buddy of mine. It was like, this is like back a long time ago. And the idea was you have to bike at a certain level, right? Like one of those recumbent bikes to continue your video game. Oh my so you're playing a video game like Xbox, but as soon as you stop pedaling, it's it stops. I love it. So that way you get a workout and your video game fix. So you're being productive while you're while you're gaming essentially. Plus you get tired, so you can't sit there and play all day. That's and right. Exactly, exactly. So all of us with like teenagers it. are like shaking our head. Like, could you imagine if my kids were Fortnite? For 45 minutes, how exhausted they would be, what a yeah. workout that would be. They'd be done for the day. They would. They'd be done for the day. Yeah. Kind of brilliant. Yep. All right. I'll patent it. Okay. So uh, I think it's already out there, actually. And there's something out there like that. There are no original thoughts. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everyone. And uh, see everybody next week. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Thanks.